pretty standard in between arcs. You know, we talked about this a little bit before. Usually when an arc ends and, you know, they're getting ready for another one, there's some fun kind of more character moments. There's, you know, just fleshing out, like, uh, relationships between some characters, maybe doing some comedic stuff or setup. Uh, this one felt like all these things in one, and I didn't think about the last aspect until the end of the chapter, which got me really worried. So the chapter starts out, we have Toto and May, and they're playing ping pong, discussing, you know, the whole thing about all the, uh, the people that were, uh, you know, recommended for promotion to grade one jujitsu sorcerer. And Toto, you could tell Toto, like, a lot of part of his plans is he wants to, you know, go on missions with, uh, with Yuji. He's legitimately just such a, <laughs> such a wild card character. He's such an energetic and funny dude. Like, every single time he comes on screen now, it's some other, like, ridiculous display he's doing. And you just saw, like, how sad he was, because he was, like, talking to, uh, he's talking to May, and then, you know, just having a discussion about it, and he's like, it's destiny, we're gonna become best friends and go on adventures. He's like a brother to me, because we know how he feels about that. They had pretty much that stepbrothers moment, where they're just like, do we just become best friends? And he just wants to be buddies with Yuji forever. Yuji kind of snapped out of it afterwards, and he's just like, this dude's fucking crazy. I don't know about this. But, uh, and then May's like, you know, the people who recommended them can't be part of their, uh, you know, the, all the, the pretty much trials to get uh, through promotion. And you just see the look on his face as he's like, I didn't know that. <laughs> well, I guess I'll, I guess I'll wait. And then he also lost in ping pong. So that double fat L. Double Fat Owl got completely wrecked by him. But then we get this nice introduction of this character, this uh, this girl Yuko, who, uh, you know, she sees Kugisaki, and she, she talks about how, like, oh, she, she recognized that he was with Yuji at some point, and she's, like, discussing with him, and she shows, like, a picture of herself that she used to be this kind of, like, very short, fat girl when they were both in middle school, and it's revealed that, uh, you know, she has a thing for Yuji because... He was really nice to her in school. He's one of the only people that was uh, that was nice to her, and she's trying to become like someone that could, you know, uh, pretty much like confess to him and talk to him. And you know, what are you gonna expect? You know, you got some young girl has a crush on this dude. Unfortunately for her, the dude is he's awkward. And it, it, with Yuji, it's it's not like uh, Yuji has this different feel to him than like normal shonen main characters in that aspect, where it just kind of like it's not that he's like, oh, I'm oblivious to it. Is he just kind of I, I, he's just kind of like weird and he just doesn't seem to have the ability to uh, uh to really kind of like display most emotions like he's really good at like aggressive combat and like physical stuff but it seems anything else he just doesn't seem to understand it's like a different level of oblivion it's not like asta who's like oh this person's being really nice to me you must want to be good friends and you like and then it's you know a girl who got a thing for him. whereas yuji's just like I understand what's going on here. What's uh, what's going on? Why? What? What? Hang on. He's just such a goof. But then like, Googie Saki, uh, you know, calls it Megumi. They they're discussing because she wants to you know find out any uh any girl preferences from Yuji because she's trying to help uh trying to help this girl. But she has this part where uh she says like her heart skips a beat. I'm wondering if that's maybe a little bit of a of a hint at maybe she has a thing for Yuji. I don't know about that. You know, maybe something for the future. Just kind of like starting it out. Who knows? Like, they haven't had a lot of interaction, but, you know, we did get a very interesting, you know, uh, kind of, like, back and forth with them in the last chapter where they became accomplices, as they said, over, you know, killing those two, uh, they, they were cursed spirits in human bodies. I don't know if there's direct, uh, names for them yet. Uh, well, the name of, um, a hybrid between the two. Obviously, that was, uh, Kechizu and, uh, Esso. But, uh, when they're talking about it, you know, they're trying to figure out what's going on. Uh, Megumi knows because we found out earlier that uh, from pretty early on, and then I think it was in chapter one actually, and then later when when Yuji told everyone else how you know he he had things for tall girls with big boobs and uh, big asses, like he said, oh, Jennifer Lawrence was as uh, was an example, and uh, they're talking about like, oh, that's uh, you know, it's pretty good for a pretty good idea there because they because the chick Yuko obviously she's not. She's not like, oh, she's six foot. She's tall for a girl because she grew like 15 centimeters. What's that, like four inches? So she's pretty tall, I believe, for a girl because Kugisaki, uh, I think average Japanese girl height is like, what, 165 centimeters? And I think 
Fugisaki is like 1.7, and looking at it, it looks like Yuko is taller than her. So, you know, they're they're in a little bit of that clear. But then, like, they, they invite over Yuji, and there's some kind of, like... There, there's They have this moment where it was kind of like that stereotypical, like, oh, he doesn't recognize her. You know, she's, she looks way different. Like, she's much taller. She's not fat. She's got, like, a whole different hair color. And, uh... Uh, right then when she's like, oh, he's probably not going recognize to recognize me, Yuji's like, oh, hey, what's going on? He, like, instantly uh, knows her face. And I thought that was kind of cool, because it just shows that, like, Yuji doesn't... Like, he, he's got this kind of, like, weird, like, steel trap of a brain when it comes to, like, interactions with others. And uh, the fact that he just, right spot on, like, recognized her, I think that catches her way off guard. And then that she has, like, a flashback, you know, showing why exactly she's, uh, you know, she likes Yuji. And someone in Yuji's class in middle school was, like, asking him about, like, you know, what kind of girls he's like. He's like, I don't really have, uh, I don't really have a, a thing for any of the girls in this class, but, you know, but if it had to be somebody, it'd be, uh, well, they, he calls her by her last name, obviously, uh, Ozawa, but Yuko is obviously gonna be easier for me to remember. Uh, and then someone's like, what are you talking about, dude? She's fat. And he's like, I, I don't really care about that. Uh, she eats really nice, and, uh, and she has, like, really nice writing and, He's much more of just like things that he enjoys like about her, which is really, really friendly. And she's like thinking about all of it and, you know, talking about how like, you know, now that uh, she's had the ability to, she wanted to try and like confess to him, but she wasn't able to do it. You know, pretty un unfortunate for her. But at the end of the chapter, when we have Kugisaki, when she's just like, she's like, I don't know if I want him to get a girlfriend before I get a boyfriend. It just bothers the hell out of me. But I traded uh, phone numbers with uh, with Yuko, so, you know, we'll, we'll keep in touch. And that was like a, oh, cool, maybe it's not over. Maybe this chick will become a regular. And I, I, I realized at the, the end of the chapter, like right after reading it, you got to keep in mind the, the sadness of some of the characters in the series. This, this series has a little bit of a, of a more brutal kind of like way to handle the characters it's not like chainsaw man where just like every character that isn't the main character and the female lead has a a target painted on them and a potential death flag every other arc but with uh jujutsu kaisen jujutsu kaisen is more of like in the middle between like a normal shonen and chainsaw man where characters could die or at least get horribly fucked up and you bring in a new character who is set up to appear again soon and she doesn't have any fighting ability she doesn't have any powers and we just had a whole scene of of uh, Choso pissed off because his brothers just died. He, both his brothers just died and he couldn't do anything about it. And they know that Yuji did it and both Choso was pissed off and Mahito looked so like excited about it all. And they just brought this, this new girl who, who Yuji clearly has some form of some form of like appreciation of and who now is going to be helpless and I'm so worried about her I'm super worried about this character like I didn't even think about it until after the chapter like I said and now I I just feel like she could easily die this chick could easily die within this arc and it would it would have much more of like a sad impact on Yuji maybe this will be the one that Yuji saves on like Junpei but Oh, God, I, I again, I'm I'm very worried about this because of the fact that like it was all set up, you know, getting into the viciousness of the cursed spirits. Like they don't have any, they don't have any mercy for humans, and uh, there, there's clearly going to be some vendetta stuff from Choso because it's Kukisaki, obviously, uh, is the one that killed Esso, but actually no, she killed uh, Kechizu and Yuji, you know, punched a hole through Esso's chest. Oh god, I'm worried about this girl. Like she just showed up and I was like, this chick, I like her. She, you know, she's cute, she seems nice. You know, she uh you know, it was a shame that she didn't get the, the courage to, to come forth like she wanted to talk to Yuji, but she can try again, you know. And it was, you have like that kind of like reader like perspective of like, oh come on, you can do it. Better luck next time. Well, you know, we're rooting for you. And then just like the realization of what happened before this chapter. I'm really hoping that she doesn't end up dead. It was a shame for Junpei. You know, it, it, it had a lot of character develop moments for Yuji. But at the same time, it was like, damn, that sucks for him. Like, cut down before he got to, you know, get much of anywhere. You know, he just started progressing and then he he got fucked. And this seems to be what's going to happen to this girl. But we'll see. We'll see how that all goes. 
<sighs> I'm really hoping it's going to be set up. Like, this is what I'm hoping, just kind of like before going into this next arc. I'm hoping it's going to be set up like she's going to get killed. And maybe Yuji saves her last second. And, you know, maybe she can join up and become a jujitsu sorcerer. I don't know. She seems like a nice girl. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be really sad if she gets screwed over. All, cause all, it'll, all it'll take is Mahito to touch her. And then she's fucked. <sighs> so look forward to that but at the same time be a, be a little cautious again it's gonna be hard because i already kind of like this character but at the same time it's also going to be hard because of the fact that yuji is going to it'll hurt him a lot if he gets uh he gets screwed over again like he did with junpei but especially because it'll be his fault oh god it won't just be him losing a friend it'll be him getting another one of his friends killed Anyway, like I said, comment below, but find the like button and the subscribe button. Check out my other videos. But other than that, I appreciate everyone who's already subscribed, and I thank you all for listening. Bye.